Hey guys, welcome back to Future Specs. I'm Wesley, and in this video I am back with another comic book history. And today I'm going to be talking about the one and only Roy Thomas. So before we get into the video, please like and subscribe down below and leave a comment because I am going to be changing up the style of how I do this video compared to the other ones that I did. So let me know if you like uh, this style with just me talking or the older style with the slideshow and everything. Let me know in the comments down below. But now let's just get right into the history of Roy Thomas. So before comics, Roy Thomas was born in 1940 in Jackson, Missouri, and he started reading comics in grade school and has been a huge fan ever since especially of that Golden Age, early Silver Age era. And as he was growing up, he had lots of fan letters appear in many Marvel and DC comics. But then in 1965, he really started to get into the industry where he quit his job as an English teacher and moved to New York, where he worked as an assistant for DC for about eight days before he, was, he moved and was hired by Marvel. The first book that Thomas worked on and wrote was the script for Modeling with Millie 44, which he would write two more issues of. And his first big superhero story would be with Iron Man in Tales of Suspense 73 in 1966, and Thomas would continue to work on many random issues during 1966, like Patsy and Hetty 104-105, Doctor Strange Stories and Strange Tales 143 and 144, and he also freelanced some stories to Charlton in Son of Vulcan 50 and Blue Beetle 54. So in 1966 to 1967 is when his career really started taking off and uh, he started to write his first ongoing title with Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos which he wrote issue 29 to 41 from April 1966 to April 1967. He then took over X-Men 20 through 43 and as well as writing X-Men, he was writing The Avengers at this time, which he wrote issues 35 to 104. And this isn't where Thomas would stop writing. He would still continue to write Doctor Strange stories and Strange Tales issues 169 to 183. But in 1969, he would return to X-Men to write issue 55 and a couple after that to try and save it from can the title from cancellation. But he ultimately failed and the X-Men title was cancelled and just started reprinting older stories from the early 60s. Then came the 1970s, which was Roy Thomas's his big decade where he would really create most of his classic characters that he's well known for and write some of his most popular stories. So in 1970, Thomas would start the Bar Conan the Barbarian title with Barry Windsor Smith doing the art, and he would write issues 1 through 115, and then he would come back later and write 240 to 275. So this was really Thomas's big title which he worked on and loved so much it was one of his favorite things to work on. And the popularity of this Conan series would also lead to the creation of the magazine sized Savage Sword of Conan and Savage Tales which were black and white stories and because they were in magazine format they could get around the Comics Code Authority and they could have more darker, more adult stories in those magazines. And in 1971, he helped flesh out the character of Man-Thing and wrote his first appearance in Color Comics. That year, he also wrote the Kree Skull War story arc in Avengers 89-97, through which is another one of his classic story arcs and one of the best Avenger stories, especially of this era. Then in 1972, Stan Lee moved to be Marvel's publisher, so Roy Thomas took over as editor-in-chief for him. And at this time, Thomas still continued to write the main title stories, and he also launched many new series over the rest of the 70s, like The Defenders, The Invaders, The What If, and The Star Wars series, which Jim Shooter has said that that Star Wars series is really what saved Marvel at the time, and they would have gone out of business without it. But even though Thomas did so much as editor-in-chief, he was only in the position for two years and was replaced by Len Wein in 1974. But Thomas would continue to write many of these titles until he left Marvel in 1981 after having a dispute with Jim Shooter. So over the next three years, Roy Thomas would be mainly at DC, where he would write 
many different characters, just some single issues, and some miniseries. So he worked on Green Lantern, Batman, he created Captain Carrot and that whole series. He worked on some Wonder Woman, and he brought back the Justice Society of America and kind of brought them to the forefront again and wrote some stories with them, bringing them back into continuity before Crisis of Infinite Earths would reset everything and make the DC Universe make sense again. And then in 1984, Thomas sent a letter to Jim Shooter, which he wanted to make amends for their indifferences that they had a few years earlier and let bygones be got bygones, as he said, and Thomas would return to Marvel in 1986, where he wrote for Marvel's new universe line which was this kind of alternate uh, universe that they wanted to do, where they basically just created new heroes, new stories, in a new world. So Thomas worked on a couple of those stories, but over the next 10 years, he really worked on some more independent, not really mainstream comics with independent publishers. He wrote issues of tie-ins for different TV series, like Xena Warrior Princess, Hercules, and even The X-Files. And he even wrote for television and wrote some scripts for various TV shows. So now in the early 2000s, Thomas would kind of just hop around from publisher to publisher writing different miniseries or various one-shots. So for Marvel, in 2004, he wrote the adapt comic adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula, which he had started earlier in his career at Marvel but never got to finish it. He would also create a comic series called Anthem, which was about World War II superheroes in an alternate reality, which was published by Heroic Publishing in 2006. And he would also return to the Red Sonja character, which he had created earlier in his super popular Conan run. So then from 2010 and on now to 2021, Roy Thomas would return and continue doing these one-shots, like he did a Wonder Woman one, and for Dynamite he would do various Red Sonja and Conan stories. But really in 2010, Thomas really slowed down with how many comics he actually wrote. But Thomas wouldn't stay out of the comic book spotlight because he would have a cameo appearance in the third season of Daredevil on Netflix as a prisoner in one of the many prison scenes. And on February 23rd, 2019, Jackson, Missouri, his hometown, declared that day as Roy Thomas Day in celebration of him. And as of right now, Roy Thomas is still very active, going to lots of different comic conventions and comic shows, and doing lots of different signings and stuff. So he may not be writing as many books as he used to, but he's still very active in the community, and still an awesome fan-favorite creator who worked on many different characters. So Roy Thomas would create so many different characters for Marvel, or at least have a hand in their creation. So I just wanted to list some of my favorites, he would create Wolverine, Vision, Luke Cage and Iron Fist, the Defenders and that whole team with the Hulk and how they're, always, they're changing lineup. He would also recreate him and turn that character into the more popular Adam Warlock in the Marvel Premiere series and his ongoing title after that. And he would also create Brother Voodoo in the Strange Tales series. So that's it for this video. Please like and comment down below if you enjoyed this video. And please tell me what you thought about this new format, which one you liked better, this one or the old style. And let me know what other comic creators, either artists or writers, you'd like to see me do a video on. So, that's it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.